Yo, welcome to JSX Jam. Today we're gonna be looking at Luxon, which is a date time library. I love this library. It's my favorite date time library. There's some other really great ones, DayJS, date functions. Um, but this one for me, I love how easy it is to use. It's easy for other people to come in and understand exactly what's going on and what it's doing. So let's just dive in and take a look at it. Let's start out with creating dates. So this is how we normally create dates. New date, we get this object. But let's just talk about how using the date time library from Luxon can enhance a lot of that. So to create a date, I can very easily just say datetime.now. I'm importing date time from the Luxon library. This just gives me this date time object. It's got a time zone, a locale, and the timestamp. If I was working with UTC times, I can easily just do this and I'll get a UTC time. Uh, there's other ways too. I can actually say date time from object and pass in uh, Harry Potter's birthday, for instance, which is nice. Uh, just really quick, really easy. You don't have to pass in all the elements. It'll just take in a current year if I don't pass in year. Let's dive into some of the more meteor sides. So let's talk about displaying dates. I've created this date here and really easily I can use this shorthand to say, give me a date. It's formatted in a way that people will recognize. There's a few different ways you can do this, but it's hard to remember what this kind of shorthand here is. So there's also the normal syntax of being able to say, you know, month, day, year. If I were to add another M here, it would be the full month. Yeah, you know, let's make it just a two year date, those kinds of things. And also I can do time formatting this way. Pretty normal. Let's move on. So Luxon also has the ability to handle locales, which is really nice. I'm going to set the locale here. And so the way that I can actually set a locale on a date is by just calling this set locale function. And what you'll see in the object here is that there is a locale set. And so if I was to set this to say French Canadian, um, that's what the locale would be set to. This is something that's in the browser. It's something that people pass along. So you know where people are coming from. So if you have an app that is in multiple languages, this is very helpful. What I can do here then, so let's get rid of this for a second and let's pull this in. I have this function called to locale string. And what it can do is it can format dates in ways that the person in that locale is expecting. So if I were to say, you know, French, but France, I would get a different format than if I were to say, you know, English, US. Similarly, even between English, US and English, Canada, we do things differently. So let's leave this as just straight English for a second. And we'll get rid of this one. And I'm going to show this where I can pass in an object to define how I want the date to show. So in the past, we were doing, you know, to format with these shorthands, but I can actually just say, you know, show the month long, show the date, the day is a numeric, and show the year as numeric. So with locale, if a French user was to come into my app and I set that French, that date's actually going to show up with not only the French format, but the French words for the months. Same thing for if I was to do Russian or if I were to do Espanol. So really helpful, really useful. One other nice little thing here is that Luxon has these shortcuts for these specific date formats. And so you're seeing date medium here is equal to this. But there's a bunch of different ones they have. I'll show you a few here. So short, full, medium, and then there's time ones. This is a, just a simple time. So this is very readable. Someone comes in and reads this that's programming. They'll understand what's going on. It's beautiful. All right, let's jump into transforming these dates. A lot of times you may have situations where you may be thinking, OK, I need the date seven days from now. And Luxon makes this super easy. So we're going to get this date. You'll see it's January 14th. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to say date plus seven days. Very readable. People understand what's happening here. And if I were to output this format, that is now seven days ahead of time. One other thing that's worth mentioning that you're seeing happening here is that Luxon creates immutable objects. So what that means is when I create this date, this date is not changing. So when I say date plus, this original date object is not going to get those seven extra days. This next week object will, but date's going to stay as January 14th. This is great because it means you won't accidentally increase days or months or weeks or 
change a date object in a way that you weren't expecting. So let's keep this going. I'm going to set a variable here for last week. Super simple. What if I were to take that original date and take 100 years off of it? Well, now I'm going to get 1925. Um, I can also do some weird things. Maybe you have a very specific use case where you need to add a year but take away 57 seconds. The point here that I'm trying to make is you probably will never use this, but it's very readable. People can understand what's happening and there's no guessing. One other bonus is this ability to use relative times. So I can take that original date and say, get me the start of the week and put it in this format. Start of this week is January 13th. I can also say, get me the end of the year or get me the end of the quarter. Easy to remember. And the person who's coming in to program next will understand what's happening, even if that's you a year from now. One other nice thing about transforming dates is we have durations. So I can create a variable called a week. And using this duration object from Luxon, I can say from this object, create a duration. And so I'm going to create a duration of seven days. If I were to output this, you're going to see that it's a duration object with a value of seven days. The nice thing about this is I can actually just say, I'm going to add a week to that. And you'll see that this is next week. Let's talk about intervals. Interval is another object from Luxon, and it brings a lot of power to tracking two dates. So I'm going to create a date called now. I'm going to create a date called later, which is 10 months from now. And what I'll do is I'll create an interval from these two dates. And so I'm just saying interval from dates now and later. And what it's going to do is create an object that has a start time and an end time. So I can get the length of this, which I believe is in milliseconds, but I can get the length of this in months. And I can obviously change this to be tell me what it is in days. Tell me what this is in minutes. You get the point. But then I can also do things like, tell me if this interval contains this specific date. So my interval between now and October 2025, is May 1st, 2026 in there? No, it's not. But is May 1st, 2025 in there? Yes, it is. This is really useful for maybe calendar events, you're trying to figure out scheduling, to know if a date falls within certain ranges. Beautiful. If I were to just output this to ISO format, I get this kind of chunky looking thing, but I can send it to a string. Mm, what about locale string? Ah, uh, here we go. We're getting better. And then similar to before, I can say date time, date, medium. And oh, look at that. A nicely formatted range of those two dates. And you'll notice it's doing some of the legwork you may have done if you've worked with dates like this in the past. Because these two are in the same year, it's not showing the year for this date. But hey, let's change that. Let's say that I was doing 2026 as my later date. Well, now it's going to show the year because they're different. Beautiful, nice, easy to work with, very readable. OK, let's take a look at getting differences between two dates. Luxon, again, makes this really easy. What I can do is I can create a start and an end date here. One's in May, one's in October. And I can just say, from the end date, get me the difference between the end date and the start date. And in this case, I'm specifying how I want it to be shown. So give me both the months and the days. If I were to just say, give me the months, I'm going to get a float value here. But if I'm saying months and days, I get these nice rounded values. Similarly, I can throw in the years here. I can also take this object and turn it into its own object really nice and quick. If I need to use this maybe for tracking length of time or if I just need to store this in some way. OK, so let's talk about an example here. Let's say you're building a calendar app. We're going to go through a bit of a setup scenario here just to show some of the things that you would be using or could use if you're doing that. Let's say that I have a calendar that I want to build that's got these two ways to view the calendar, either by week or by month. Well, I'm going to create a, the date that's now. I'm going to set my calendar view to be weekly. And then I'm going to set two values here. I'm going to say first day of the view and last day of the view. So it's now and the start of. In this case, it'll be week. And for the last day of the view that I'm showing is going to be the end of the week. So if I show these off here, today is the 14th of January. So the first day of my view is going to be the 13th, and the last day is going to be the 19th. Cool. If someone were to quickly swap out and say, I want to see actually a month view, I can change this up. And now I'm getting the first day of the view and the last day of the view. OK, so we're going to go through a bit of an example here 
where maybe we're creating the full calendar view and we need to know each of the weeks when they start and end. So we're going to set the current day we're parsing to be the start of the month. And we'll walk through this kind of piece by piece. But basically what we're going to do here is we're going to say while the current day has the same month as now, keep going. And at the very end, we're going to keep adding a week until we pass. So the first time we go through here, we're basically going to create an interval. And we're going to say the date that we've chosen, the first of the month, get me the start of and the end of the week. That's it. And then add a week, keep going until we're done. This console log is going to show us, well, in this particular month, we have five weeks that we have to show. Some of them are in December, some of them are in February, but that's just because there's overlap. This gives you a great API for being able to read what's happening. Easy to use intervals. It's easy to check on whether a part of that date is the same. Overall, just giving you really powerful, flexible tooling. I hope you like this video. If you do, like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions on other libraries or frameworks or things you'd love to see, hit me up. Thanks for watching.